Greetings, my name is Torden, and this is Advanced Voxelmancy 101. I'm thrilled that beta has started and the NDA is lifted, and I'm now able to record and present these videos. This is the first in a series of Advanced Voxelmancy videos that I'll be making. These videos assume that you have achieved at least some small amount of familiarity with the voxel tools, how to cut and paste, and use the place voxel tool, etc. Built a little workshop up here my roof here at the beginning of beta so that we can begin these uh, making these tutorials. In this first installment what we're going to do is go over some of the basic techniques, uh, discuss some of the terminology I use to describe what we're doing and make a simple octagonal pillar. So Arthur C. Clarke famously said, any sufficiently advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. Voxelmancy is the study of voxels in the voxel space so that we're able to use its features to achieve the result, so results we want by intent rather than by accident. This can, of course, look to the uninitiated, like magic. The first thing I want to discuss is the voxel space itself. We talk about placing voxels, but in truth, we don't actually place voxels. The voxels already exist within the voxel space. This is an extra small core, which means it is 127 voxels across in each direction. Until we apply a texture to one, we call it an air voxel. When we place a voxel, what we're really doing is applying a texture to one of them. Each voxel is a cube with eight corners or vertices, and we can move these vertices up to one and a half voxels away from its original starting location. When we move a vertex, which is the singular of vertice, it is moving that corner for all eight voxels that share it. If I use the smooth voxel tool here on this flat surface, it does nothing because it thinks that it's smooth, but the shrink voxel tool has an alternative function. If I hold down the Alt key and I click, it pulls the vertices in towards the center of my uh, selection circle. If I hit backspace to undo, if I expand this by holding down the Control key and using my mouse wheel, and I click again in the center of this here, but holding down the Alt key, you'll see that it pulls in some voxels towards the center and it uses a larger area. If I copy one of these, and let's go ahead and change its color, raise it up. So basically what I've done is taken the normal voxel size, and it's moved three of the four vertices in at the top here. Now, dual universes use something by default that we call existing dominance. So if I were to paste this from the clipboard, the vertices in the clipboard and the vertices in the area that I'm pasting to are, of course, different. Because dual universe is using, uses existing dominance, when I place this here, it will move the vertices from the clipboard version, the gray block, to match the vertices that already exist as textured voxels in the space. So when I click on this, you'll see that it moves the vertices to match the red cube. There's another uh, alternative function. In this case, if I hold down the Shift key and I click, it uses instead what's called paste dominance, and it uses the vertices from the clipboard, and it pulls the vertice from the red cube out to meet what I'm placing. So that's existing dominance versus paste dominance. And again, Dual Universe uses existing dominance by default. Air voxels never get dominance in dual universe at this time. So we're going to go ahead and undo this a couple of times. Now, the next thing I want to go over are uh, points, pixels, lines, and flats. If I take, uh, actually first we're going to talk about reactors. So if I take a voxel and I copy it, Go ahead and raise it up. Now, this is a reactor wedge. We'll go over more as we go on with these tutorials about what that is and why it's a wedge and all that. 
but this is a reactor. It's basically just eight voxels around the corners of an existing voxel. I use uh, small cubes as for my reactor because I find that it's easier to see. But you can use full-size cubes if you like. So you'll see that when I place this reactor around a voxel, it reacts to that voxel. And it's using, again, existing dominance, so the reactor corners grow to meet the voxel here in the center that was pre-existing. But it lets me see where those corners are nice and neat and clean. Now, if I take a voxel and I'm going to shrink this voxel, so I'm going to again choose my smooth voxel tool. I'm going to expand out holding down the control key and using the mouse wheel. I'm going to extend my circle out to full size. And I'm going to hold the alt key and use the uh, pinch or shrink feature of the smooth voxel tool. And I'm going to click on this and you'll see that it brings, it shrinks my cube. This is actually the size cube that I use for my reactors. And then I'm going to do that again and I get an even smaller cube. And I'm going to do it again, and I use an even smaller cube. And this is actually the smallest cube that you can achieve using the Smooth Voxel tool, um, or the Area Smooth Voxel tool, which we'll perhaps get into later. Now, if I go ahead and I place a reactor again around what I just made, you'll see that it reacts and it shows me where the corners are of my little tiny cube right there. Now, if I go ahead and select this reactor, and then I use control mouse wheel to change the size of my selection cube, I can bring it down so that I'm just selecting the thing in the middle. And we're going to go ahead and copy that. Now, if I place this in the air right here, and then place it again, one voxel to the side. Let me get in close so you can see it. So we have two voxels here. We have one voxel right here, and we have a second voxel right here. And the second voxel, again, because of dominance, has pulled out to meet the first voxel. And if we copy this, you see that we have what I call a line. Now if we repeat that process, so we place a line, and we place another one next to it. It grows out to meet the first line. So now we have a line here and a flat here. And you'll see that this flat isn't in the actual voxel space. It is a little bit into the voxel space and a little bit out. So this voxel is actually there. And if I go ahead and I paste a reactor around it, and again, because of dominance, I can actually use any reactor. I don't have to go grab my basic one. You'll see that it has moved the vertices for this voxel out to this location. But this is a flat, and that is a line over there, and a point right here, or a pixel right here in the center. Now I use the word point and pixel differently. These reactors right here, and we will go into in a later installment of Advanced Voxelmancer how we achieve these, but these right here, if we get in really close, as close as we can actually see, you'll see that you can't actually see the cube here. And all of the vertices are actually in exactly the same place. So we basically have a voxel that has been rendered down to having zero size, and we call that a point. And you can make lines from points, you can make lines from pixels. You can make lines from small voxel to another small voxel, but um, in this particular case, what I typically use these terms for are uh, for points, lines, and flats. All right? Um, so the piece that we're gonna, the one thing that we're gonna build here, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use reactors uh, to make this happen. So. If I wanted to make a cylinder, for instance, so first off, I'm going to use the Place Voxel tool. And if I hit the E key, I can change the shape of my Place Voxel tool. Um, in this particular case, the Place Voxel tool 
places more than one voxel if I'm using other shapes. Um, again, I can hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to change uh, the size of the thing that I'm making. Um, you'll see that at some points it goes yellow. This is because the tool is saying, hey, wait, I don't know how to render this in this space. It's too complex. I'm going to not quite give you the shape you want. The closer we get out to uh, larger, it goes green, which means that it thinks that it's going to be more accurate. But I want a small pillar. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, I'm using the arrow keys and page up, page down here to move this around a little bit. And I'm going to um, change my color. And we're going to go ahead and place a, uh, try to make place a small pillar. Now you'll notice that this was the shape we wanted and this is the shape that it made. Um, and these two shapes are not the same. Um, I would like to have a cleaner circle so we're going to sh I'm going to show you how you achieve that so if I go ahead and uh, expand my workspace out here just a little bit by the way the reason everything's going red right here is because I'm actually working with two different cores there's the core that is um, the building and there's a smaller core placed on top of it and I need to make sure that I target the workspace core before I can play something because that's the core that I'm currently editing right here. All right, so if I copy out this voxel right here and place it again up in the air, and we're gonna go ahead and place a reactor around it so we can see where its vertices are. All right, now if I take a standard cube and I place it in the air. So this is a normal voxel. And again, I'm going to copy a reactor and place it around it. Now, what we really want is something that approaches an actual octagon that is exactly two voxels across or a two by two. So our cube has all of those corners already except for this one which conveniently this has made for us. So if we take these two reactor corners and place it there, and again, existing dominance is the default. So if I take my cube and I go to here, the two that are there already will get dominance. And when I place this, I get this shape. And you'll see that when I copy this, to here, we've actually got a different, slightly different shape than the previous one. So if I go over here, and again, let's go ahead and change our color to something a little bit more obvious. And we're going to go ahead and raise this up one. So if I do that, now I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. So to rotate, you hold down R and use the mouse wheel. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do it again. There's still some bugs in this game, so sometimes things are a little slow. All right, so now we actually have a much better shaped octagon. Now, I'm going to go ahead and place this here. Now, I want to uh, not have it, so if I just place it right here, it will distort to meet the existing voxels. Rather than have that happen, I'm going to hold down the shift key so I get paste dominance. Now that will move the voxels of the floor uh, to meet what I'm pasting, but that makes it look a little bit smoother right here. So I can go ahead and paste multiple times. To get my octagonal pillar. All right, so that is Advanced Voxelmancy 101. Tune in next time for the next installment of the Advanced Voxelmancy series, and I look forward to seeing you then.